Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was, brought to you from the Virtualization Practice. I am Tom Howarth. The headlines. Two weeks ago, IBM had their Internet Co Connect conference in Las Vegas with a slew of announcements. VMware announced a changing of the guard in their networking and security group. Oracle bought startup Ravello Systems. Last week, it was RSA conference in San Francisco and Carl Eschenbach resigned from his role as Chief Operating Officer at VMware. Now for a breakdown of those individual items. It was a busy week or two in the enterprise IT world. As we said, IBM had their Internet Conference, Inter Interconnect Conference in Las Vegas. Amongst the many announcements, one that caught the eye of the analysts at Virtualization Practice was the announcement that IBM and VMware are partnering it up to enhance the IBM SoftLayer Cloud. This makes sense with VMware's tactic acceptance that they do not have the ability or clout to chase down AWS in the public cloud. This fits well with the watering down of the vCloud offering and not putting, putting dollars into more data centers. Also, IBM is a truly global company with 49 globally distributed data centers. So this makes sense for both IBM and VMware. Who would not want to swipe at VMware's customer base for hybrid cloud? One of the biggest blockers for cross hypervisor hybrid cloud is the fact that virtual machines need to be converted before being spun up in the cloud and this makes for delay. By utilizing vSphere in the soft layer IBM cloud, they get around this issue and customers can quickly grow and shrink their capacity. What's interesting about this hybrid cloud partnership is it also includes the ability to create vSAN nodes to enable dedicated storage and full support of the deployment of vSphere 6 when using IBM's Cloud Builder service. It's this mobility that is a, Amazon's Achilles heel. With Amazon, it's an all or nothing package. <coughs> You're a public cloud or nothing. It's very easy to get things into AWS, but getting them out is difficult. VMware and IBM will be showcasing the integration that NSX and AirWatch bring to the party and allowing seamless integration between on-premises and hybrid cloud resources. We believe that this will be the first of a number of such announcements between VMware and public cloud players, as vCloud Air morphs from being a dedicated public cloud, public hybrid cloud offering to an active interface between on-premises, third-party hybrid cloud providers, and VMware's own data centers. We at the VMware Virtualization Practice are very interested to see how this plays out. For further information, read Steve Viva's post on this subject. Two weeks ago, saw the announcement that Martin Casado was leaving VMware's network and security group at VMware. This is the group that owns the NSX product. Now he's joining venture capitalist firm Henderson Horowitz as a general partner. Incidentally, Casado was co-founder and CTO of Nicera, the the networking company that VMware bought for 2.2 billion in 2012 that became NSX. Now this closes the cir circle for Martin, whose first institutional investor at NYSERA was, coincidentally, Andreessen Horowitz. And Ben Horowitz of the company served on NYSERA's board and acted as Casado's business mentor. Will Casado make a good venture capitalist? That remains to be seen. But I think he has a very good grounding and understands the culture of Andreessen Horowitz. The firm tends to like partners who have walked the walk in terms of living the startup life. This, coupled with the firm's history with the Casado, makes it a good fit. In fact, Casado did not jump. The fact that Casado did not jump ship when VMware purchased Nicera and became the general manager of the VMware network and security business unit has filled out his business credentials, especially after taking the unit from a standing start to a 600 million run rate. However, what about the VMware business unit that is now leaderless? Well, VMware has already appointed Casado's successor and Dr. Ravi Raswami. He's going to be general manager and executive vice president. Ramaswamy brings some serious networking chops. He joins from Broadcom where he was executive vice president and general manager of the infrastructure and networking group. And prior to that, he served as the President and General Manager of Cisco's Cloud Services and Switching Technology Group. 
The fact that VMware is appointed from outside indicates how pivotal to the ongoing success of the NXS division is, with what with the hypervisor quickly becoming a non-entity and vSphere's revenues flattening out on a saturated market. How will this affect the Nicira and SX position within the company in general? Will it mean that they will have finally be brought completely into the cloud, into their fold? Will employees now be paid with a VMware check rather than an ICERA one? Will there be a realignment of reporting structures? One would hope so. If only for the clarity that would bring. Currently, the NSX group is a company within a company, and I would think that that anomaly would need to be aligned before the Dell and EMC deal is completed. NSX coupled with vSAN is the big hope of the company. However, for an NSX to be truly successful, it needs to revisit its decision to deprecate the multi-hypervisor version. It also needs to revisit the decision to be only virtual based. For NSX to be truly successful, it needs to be able to talk end to end to more than just VMware based services. Bubbles of NSX surrounding virtual islands are good, but every time the traffic moves from a virtual environment to a physical environment, it has to pass through a gateway device and enter legacy networking until the traffic reaches its destination in the physical world. I would like to see NSX in the NIC cards for physical boxes, but that's unlikely to happen. But it would be good to see the access. It would be good to see it natively in the access switch layer. Currently, solutions such as those offered by Arista EOS allow VXLAN integration with NSX. Not true NSX end to end. And this is the same situation with Cumulus Linux, Juniper, and Back Brocade. This is why the appointment of Rasawami is so interesting. He brings broad networking chops to the group, which he gathered at Broadcom and Cisco. This means he will understand both SDN and legacy networking world intimately. I hope that when he starts on April 1st, he brings his technical mind as well as his business mind. The NSX will need a firm direction and guidance, both from a business standpoint and a technical position. The continuity that having Casado at the helm in the last four years brought to the group was invaluable to VMware. It was a unique position that Martin held. He was a leader from a business perspective and a technical view. Martin's done good work at VMware and now Rashami must finish it, make NSX a $1 billion business group. At the same time, changes need to be made from both a technical viewpoint and from a corporate position to make that dream a reality. Next is the shock news that Oracle has entered into an agreement to purchase startup Revelo Systems for a purported $500 million. For those who are not aware of Revelo Systems, they specialise in easing the pain of migrating workloads from one environment to another. That's a simplistic overview and not particularly useful. What they do is offer a bridge between multiple clouds by allowing you to run workloads within Google Compute Engine and or Amazon Web Services, as well as any other virtual machine technology, regardless of where the data is located. At first glance, this does not gel well with Oracle's historical approach to doing business and opens up many questions. In fact, it really makes the purchase. In fact, it makes the purchase look like Oracle has bought a hybrid cloud. Now, many will claim that Oracle is not hybrid cloud, but considering that Oracle allows you to run workloads within GCS and AWS, as well as within practically any other virtual machine technology, we are talking hybrid cloud. Hybrid these days does not just mean between on-premises and data centers, and the cloud, it also means between clouds. So, Reveller is an enabler of a hybrid cloud, one that not only will run within Oracle's ISAS cloud as an overlay, but will allow bursting into other clouds that is currently running within Oracle's cloud. Is <clears throat> the most interesting part is running in the Oracle cloud. That's the important part because this hasn't been tested yet. That said, it should work as Revalo runs within a Linux guest today and nested virtualization is nothing new. But layered virtualization is where you can run any other virtual machine construct, say Hyper-V or VMware, on another top of another layer, such as Oracle Cloud, or as it currently runs, AWS or GCS. This is what Oracle bought Revalo for will give Oracle Cloud a unique advantage. There's no need to translate a virtual machine from one cloud to another. Staging into a cloud becomes much, much easier. 
Oracle has been quietly buying up companies to make a high performance cloud. And with that in its SaaS offerings in the Oracle database world, it also provides PaaS around its Java offerings and now it has an ISAS around its virtualization offerings. Revalo purchase will enhance all three and generally providing a hybrid cloud technology that requires very little to migrate between multiple targets. However, there is one little extra and that is the blueprint library of applications. This community has created hundreds of blueprints for applications that can be used for testing, cyber ranges, sandboxes, and even production deployment. This part of the product may actually be the most exciting aspect for Oracle Cloud. If it allows these blueprints to be deployed within its own cloud, it may take a lot of work. This may take a little bit of work by the Ravello folks, but this should be minor given the hypervisors in use. Now there was lacklustre support on social media for this purchase and I believe this is more due to the purchaser being Oracle rather than angst against Ravello. Once Oracle gets involved historically people are concerned about three things. Will the technology stay around? Will the community that's grown around the technology stay around? And more importantly what will Oracle change in way of licensing? And these concerns have many folks scratching their heads and frowning with concern. If Oracle leaves Ravello untouched from a licensing viewpoint and allows a community not only to stay but to grow, then this may be a turnaround that Oracle needs. They need to get away from the image of the bogeyman. The bad rep needs to be offset by something useful. The things that, Hi the things that Ravello can bring to the hybrid cloud can make it totally unique. Hopefully, this time Oracle will do the right thing. <coughs> Last week, RSA had their annual conference at the Moscone Centre in San Francisco. And apart from water cooler discussions about the IBM, the sorry, the Apple and FBI case, it seems to be a bit of a lacklustre affair. That said, over fifty thousand people attended, and the main focus this year seemed to be around analytics and big data being used for threat identification. Final piece of news: Carl Eschenbach has resigned from his Chief Operating Officer role at VMware. This led to a raft of brain drain comments and the end is nigh from VMware blogs from various analysts. We at the VM Virtualization Practice do not see this as a negative for VMware but a positive. People join and leave companies at all times. What could be seen as worrying for VMware is that they appear to have a significant number of executives leaving. This includes in the last month Jonathan Chadwick, the Chief Finance Officer, and as mentioned earlier in this newscast, Martin Casado. But again, this is not the case. If they were having difficulty in hiring quality replacements, yeah, I'd be worried. But again, no. Martin is being replaced by Rajiv Rashawami, veteran executive from Borland and prior to that Cisco. And there are, and um, <clears throat> Carl Eschenbach's position is being split between a number of very, very highly respected professionals within. VMware. We at the virtualization practice see this as a normal process in corporate evolution. A company has three major phases, pioneers, settlers and town planners. VMware is entering the town planner phases. Those executives that are pioneers or founders are not necessarily cut out to be a good executive at a settler range stage. And the same is true when moving from settler to town planner. Again, all three of these executives are actually leaving Vendorland. Casado and Eschebach are moving on to venture capitalist companies and Chadwick is moving on to concentrating on his advisory roles within other companies. Frankly, I'd be more worried if VMware were hemorrhaging technical staff. Finally, news from our sponsors. Veeam has announced that VMware and HP veteran Kevin Rooney will be joining as a Vice President North American Channel Sales. Cerber have announced support for Arista Networks to provide network-aware software-defined infrastructure controls to allow precise network-aware routing and placement decisions. EG Innovations have expanded their partner program within Europe with the signing of Systemat, an IT partner who serves Belgium and Luxembourg. Hytrust has named Ashwin Krishnan 
as Senior Vice President of Product Management. He joins them from Brocade. And they have also been named in the best cloud computing companies to work for list. So well done to High Trust. Manage Engine have added to their product portfolio with a privileged identity management solution for SSH keys. And they have also announced their fourth Middle East user-based conference in Dubai. New Relic have announced a new set of features across their New Relic software analytics cloud. Prealert have unveiled behavioral analytics for Elastic Stack, fine name for a product. The new product allows Elasticsearch users to automate the analysis of large data sets, allowing an easier identification of anomalous activities and specific behaviors within the Elastic Stack. VMware Turbo hosted TurboFest in Silicon Valley, the first user group event of 2016. This followed on from the success of their Turbo Fest in Boston last year. Zenems have announced enhanced announcements of their service dynamics platform, including dependency views, component or group organizers, and trap filtering. Okay, this is the end of this edition. Thank you for watching and listening. If you have any news that you would like included in the podcast, please, as always, forward it to news at virtualizationpractice.com. So, once again, thank you, good evening, and goodbye.